Want to hear some jokes, YouTube? If I wanted to hear any eucalyptus out of yeah, I would have asked for a tree. Am I just too stupid to understand the boglum? I just... What does that joke even mean? If I want to hear any eucalyptus out of you, I call you a tree? How is that a joke? There's no punchline there. Unless I'm just completely missing what the eucalyptus means and that I'm, I'm sounding it out. It just doesn't make any sense to me. I thought that would be a fine intro because we're talking about Puff. Cobra's new bearded dragon that he's had for a month or a month and a half so far. I'm not going to cover everything in the Puff story. I'm just covering some of his more recent videos covering taking care of the animal. There was a lot of concern because Josh is a mentally disabled, dirty mess of a man. <laughs> you know, he has... He has machines to make wands inside of his apartment, and he 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 consciously eats squid and hard-boiled egg burritos. So that's what I'm assuming is going to be fed to Puff every single day. Uh, there's already been calls to like Animal Protective Services or whatever it's called, and apparently he's doing okay. He got Puff the bearded dragon from his buddy, who I guess was moving or didn't want him anymore or something, and somehow he came to the idea of giving Cobes <laughs> the animal. What a horrible decision. So, you might be wondering, saturated, what in the world could you possibly have to contribute to this conversation? Well, as a wee little boy, I had a leopard gecko. I'm not going to pretend like I was the best owner of the leopard gecko, but there are some things I remember about taking care of the pet, and I'm going to see if Josh is following any of that. I know that the two animals aren't exactly identical, but they are both reptiles, so there's probably some overlap going on there. Feel free to call me the dumbest, biggest moron of all time, but without further ado, let's examine some puff clips. Tell me all about it, Puffers. Puff loves the leather futon. Yes, he does. That's a long ways down for a Puffers. I'd be careful, dude. I love that Josh's first idea when he takes his bearded dragon out of his cage is... Hey, let's put him on top of on top of the futon. Because the question would be, how would he climb up there, right? You know, I know bearded dragons have a pretty pretty good uh, climbing capability, but that's like a strictly vertical, slippery surface. You can also see that there's what looks like residual beer stains along the right side of that couch, and you know everybody was always afraid. He's basically gonna crawl along all of his floors, his furniture, get like pesticides and old Cheeto dust and old Dorito dust all over himself and die from that. And it wouldn't surprise me, to say the least. But he's doing okay, but here he is filming him sitting over the edge of a couch, you know, four and a half feet in the air. And I'm assuming this wouldn't kill him if he fell off directly. But it's also not good <laughs> to have your reptile fall to the floor from the top of a couch. I remember my leopard gecko, when he was real little, I had shifted his, he had this little coconut hut that he liked to sit in. I had shifted it like ever so slightly and he fell like two inches and he was pissed. He bit my finger after that. He was not happy. You know, show some respect for Puffers, man. My boy Puff loves to explore the apartment. He goes nuts over it. I tried giving him a good soak earlier 
and he was just not having it. Whoa, Jesus Christ. Well, there you go. He <laughs> so there's a couple things to comment on. First off, Puff is desperately clawing at the back of the couch at the wall to try and escape this apartment. You know, I'm sure the weed and cigar and booze fumes are just suffocating this poor animal, and he's just trying to find any avenue to escape this. It's completely understandable. I feel like I'd be the same trapped animal if I was in this situation. Second off, this goes back to my lack of experience, it looks like the side of Puff's body, like the skin part is like sagging along the edge. I don't know if that's normal. I don't know if that like adjusts through sunlight or water intake or like bathing or whatever. It just looks a little bit odd to me just cause like, unless he's shedding right now, my lizard was always like pretty uniform throughout, if that makes any sense. I don't know. I don't know a whole lot. Second off, Cobes makes no effort to save him when he jumps from the couch. He just continues filming him. In one regard, you have to you have to be grateful, you know, because <sighs> there's just far too many Twitter fight videos that the man who's recording the clip is just not focusing on the action. Cobes is on top of that. He's watching out for me. He knows what I want to see from this all. Check this out, YouTube. Puffers loves his super worms. Underneath the fluorescent calcium, there is a little live bug right there that likes to crawl around. Oh, that calcium powdery hot puffers. That's a puffer snack. So there's a couple things. Uh, it's good that he's giving him live bait. I know that that's a really good enrichment tool for lizards, snakes, whatever. Because just eating like dry pellets or dead bugs or whatever just doesn't give him that satisfaction it can make him depressed the other thing is i've used that calcium pad powder in the past too the vets i had and like the pet store clerks i would talk to they always told me to like soak or like put the insects inside a container and shake it around a little bit with that powder so they get evenly coated because they tend to want to avoid it if it's like large clumps like we're seeing of calcium powder because they think it's weird the texture's off or whatever so that's just a piece of advice you know coat the mealworm it's also i always heard it's not good if like you shouldn't constantly be putting fresh pests in the area with the reptile because there's something like if he's not hungry he's not going to eat and allowing these insects to like crawl around there's chances that he could get bitten or you know a numerous different issues of problems so watch moderate how often you're feeding him this it should be like a combination i forget what what the percentage was i feel like i fed him like three times a day and one meal was live and the other two were pellet type foods so that's my two cents that's what i'm thinking Get four containers of live mealworms. Freeze dried vegetable blend, bearded dragon food, vegetable mix. And of these beardy treats with some bugs right here, some pellets and treats, and there's calcium and powder. He's got plenty of food, man. And he's, uh, got one right in there right now. So a couple things. One off, he actually has a decent supply of different types of foods and treats for him. Bravo to that. The focus point is on the mealworms. Now, it could have changed in the past 10-15 years since I've had my reptile, but ours were always refrigerated because that's how you could keep them alive the longest. And he has four containers full. And I forget, I could get like different sizes. And I feel like the different sizes were like 
15 or 25 like there was a small and a large size so let's assume he has like the 15 mealworm one he has 60 mealworms there you know a bearded dragon might eat like what two two or three a day maybe you know i'm not an expert again so two or three a day he has a 30 or a 20 day supply sitting right there they're not going to live that long they're going to die well before that so we're already running into that issue but give him some props he's prepared he did say in the past that if he has to cut back on his booze drinking in order to keep puff alive he would we'll see if that continues <laughs> i am skeptical of it but so far not looking too terrible they put a live grasshopper in there for him too there he goes I can only get one because that's all I had in stock. So he's giving them three bugs. They were alive. So he's saying that there was only one <laughs> grasshopper in stock in the entire store. All right. Maybe. I don't know. That's odd. Interesting. I always remembered when I would go to get crickets, they would be in this huge tin. You know, probably like two feet wide, three feet deep, four feet long, something like that. And there were hundreds of them in there. And you, you would just get like a, a cardboard, like milk carton thing and just shake them into a container to take them home. Um, the other thing is I love watching reptiles eat bugs. I think it's cool. Their tongue sticking out and whatever. The last comment, <sighs> I'm not sure that this like, astroturf type thing this like felt thing he has in the cage is good i'm not so sure about that my lizard always had like rocks and sand and dirt that's what was in there there was no like artificial stuff in there um because from what i remember having that type of felt stuff Sometimes their claws can get stuck and it can be really uncomfortable because they could like tear their claw out. And so that's like bad, obviously. So a bag of sand from the store, you know, you have to change it out, obviously, when you shovel the poop out and whatever and the clumps of pee and whatever. So like you probably only need like one bag of medium sized sand every month, probably until you cycle through it. I don't know you know cut back on the DoorDash spending and get some sand for your lizard bro you only had one cricket at the store or grasshopper or whatever so I figured to tell him let it scamper around so when he sees it he'll eat it he's a happy dragon he likes to uh, play with his reflection I've noticed and then he'll take his food and just smear it in his water dish when he soaks and he's just, that makes it his territory, you know, and that's just fine. Hi, Puffers. What up, YouTube? Puff likes the uh, pellets and stuff, but that's not his main source. He's putting way too much food inside of this enclosure, dude. He's like filling the entire ground with food. It's like not good. You're gonna, he's going to eat too much. You have to space it out and you have to keep it clean. You know, you can't just have these scraps of garbage everywhere. It's not good. And his comment about Puff not liking his reflection, I think that's him trying to escape. I saw that there was like blue duct tape on the side. I don't know if that's like to hold something or if that's to prevent him from bashing his head into the glass more. I don't know. This tank seems kind of small for how big Puff is. I, you know, my. My leopard gecko is probably like maybe four inches long at his largest. He was pretty tiny. So like the tank that Cobes has right now is probably big enough for my lizard. And Puff is like five times as big as him. So like, whew, you need a bigger tank, bro. It's, he's not going to like it in there. He's going to start freaking out. And that's probably why he keeps clashing with the glass. Right now he's sleeping. I just give him a quick mist with the spray bottle while he's sleeping. So then when he wakes up, he'll have calcium, romaine lettuce, loaded protein goodness. Yeah, I'm sure Puff loved that, Cobes. I'm sure he was really appreciative of you spraying him with the squirt bottle while he was trying to sleep. 
I'm sure he loved that. You couldn't have waited like an hour until he got up <laughs> to freshen him up. I mean, you know, he, he, he proceeds to put the camera inside the tank and try and videotape him. And I'm just trying to imagine from the lizard's perspective, seeing this goblin man peeking in with his camera into the tank. It's just kind of funny. But uh, that covers everything I wanted to talk about with Puff and Cobes. Nothing terrible has happened yet. Nothing catastrophic has happened yet. But there's still plenty of time. I wanted to leave you guys <laughs> with a clip of Cobes showing off his new hairline. He's looking good, dudes. That's most definitely what is up. And until next time, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.